This week on ANN, 7th Avenue's church leaders expressed condolences to families who were affected by two terrorist attacks in Brussels. Executive leaders of the denomination elect a president for the Church of Southern Asia Pacific region. And thousands of Adventist youth of all ages skip church to, quote, be the sermon during an annual service initiative. These stories and more coming up. First in the news, at least 30 people have been killed as a result of two explosions in Brussels, Belgium on Tuesday, March 22. The attacks took place in the city's Zeventem airport and in the city's Malbec metro station. In addition to the deaths, more than 200 people were wounded by the explosions. Belgium's Prime Minister Charles Michel called the acts, quote, blind, violent, and cowardly. He also told his Twitter followers, I strongly condemn these hateful attacks. Our thoughts go out to the victims and their families. We stand united against terrorism. The Seventh-day Adventist Church's president, Ted Wilson, offered his condolences to affected families of the tragedy. Wilson said, I have prayed for the people of Belgium and for our church members who can be a spiritual strength to others in this very difficult time. Adventist church leaders in the inter-European region also called for members to, quote, draw close to all who are suffering in these times of great anguish. Leaders also addressed the families of the victims by saying, Quote, may our prayers and thoughts comfort them in this time of pain, anger, and sadness. The statement went on to say, we also pray that the Lord our God may fill their hearts with the certainty of eternal life in which we will live with joy and gladness in brotherly communion. Death and pain will be no more. To read the full statement, visit news.adventist.org. The second highest governing body of the Seventh-day Adventist Church this week elected a president for the church's southern Asia-Pacific region. Saul Samuel replaces Leonardo Asoy, who succumbed to a rare bone marrow disease in January. Samuel previously served as an executive secretary of the church's Southern Asia Pacific Territory. He intends to pursue the course of Asoy, who was elected to serve as the territory's president at the General Conference session in San Antonio, Texas last July. At the time, Asoy said he was especially eager to find ways to reach Buddhist and Muslim in this territory. Upon accepting his new role, Samuel said, quote, My main burden is to engage and involve our young people and professional and non-professional lay members in reaching out to the unreached Chinese, Buddhist, Hindus, Muslim, and secular urban people. He also said he wants to reach members who have left the church or stopped attending services. Samuel, who is also the first Burmese to serve as an Adventist regional president, said his vision for the territory is to mobilize, unite, and utilize its God-given resources, including media and technology, to spread the gospel. To read more about Saul Samuel, visit news.adventist.org. Thousands of Adventist young people throughout the world committed themselves to sharing the love of Jesus through acts of service during this year's Global Youth Day. The annual initiative encourages Adventist youth to, quote, be the sermon by being the hands and feet of Jesus. And here are some highlights from this year's GYD. The sermon. Hi, I'm Elvin. I'm Kang. Hello, everybody, all over the world. It is the Global Youth Day here in the Chinese Union Mission. Hey, my name is Matilda. I'm from Lebanon and I'm 15 years old. This is the first program for Australia, and we're so excited to have you watching.
new people. New people who believe in God just like I do. Today we had Global Youth Day and we passed out water to homes in the Flint area that is contaminated with unclean water. My name is Seth Bramwell and I'm with Fairhaven Seventh-day Adventist Church. Even though, even though they were just, they were alone, they can lean on to God. It was such a nice report. I love how the kids interacted. I'm really glad that our church in Middle East are doing their best to show care to people and to meet their needs. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have started our descent. Your seat belt sign is now on. Broadcasting live from Melbourne Airport, so anything can happen. Anything can happen. Thanks. Back to you, Dylan. At least 13 students were killed and 34 were injured Sunday as a result of a bus accident that occurred 150 kilometers or 93 miles south of Barcelona, Spain. The bus that lost control and crashed into a car was carrying 57 foreign students from the Uramus Student Network. All of the victims were female, according to Uramus. The group was returning to Barcelona after visiting a fireworks festival in Valencia. Church leaders from the inter-European region expressed their condolences to the families of the victims. The leaders said, Words may not suffice to express the heartfelt sorrow that we feel for the passing of these young girls. We cannot even begin to understand what the families of the victims are going through right now. The statement went on to say, quote, May our prayers, sympathy, and heartfelt condolences bring comfort to all those who lost their beloved ones. May God embrace them in comfort during this difficult time. When a small Seventh-day Adventist congregation in an isolated community in southern Sweden found out refugees from Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Eritrea would become their neighbors, they came up with unique ways to help the refugees settle in the area. In addition to offering classes on the Swedish language and culture, leading walks through the forest, and setting up a clothing and goods store, church members also came up with a fun way to introduce the refugees to the snow. Members collected ski equipment, including skis, boots, and appropriate clothing, and offered free skiing lessons. Lars Gilly, pastor of the Adventist Church in Nyheiten, said many of the refugees had never seen snow before they migrated to Sweden. So when they first attempted to ski, some were a little scared. But Gilly said, quote, it has become a very popular activity, especially when the sun shines, as it can be so very beautiful. The church's activities didn't stop with skiing. Naya Heighton's Pathfinder Club joined local community members to organize free bicycle rentals, arts and crafts classes, and soccer matches. As a result, 25 refugee children have joined the local Pathfinder Club. Members are also committed to helping refugees find jobs. Leaders say, although their refugee status means they won't get paid employment, there's hope that finding work in local industries will help them reestablish a sense of self-worth. A Seventh-day Adventist health center that addresses the physical and emotional needs of victims of female genital mutilation was selected to be this year's recipient of an award named after one of Germany's most notable politicians after the Second World War. The Desert Flower Foundation of Valfrieda Hospital in Berlin-Zellendorf was unanimously voted to receive this year's Louise Schroeder Medal. The foundation was founded in 2013 under the partnership of Valdfrida Adventist Hospital and Somalian supermodel Waris Deary. The Desert Flower Foundation helps restore victims of female genital mutilation, which is a cultural ritual in parts of Africa and Asia. Deary, who was a victim of FGM at age 5, is an international activist and established the foundation to raise awareness for the ritual. 
The medal's namesake, Louise Schroeder, was known as a champion for the equal treatment of women and for her efforts against injustice and abuse of power. The award is presented annually to a person or institution representing the political and personal legacy of Louise Schroeder in an excellent manner. The president of the Berlin Parliament, Ralph Weinen, will present the distinction to a Desert Flower Foundation on April 21. Representatives from the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Euro-Asia region recently took part in the 16th annual National Prayer Breakfast in Russia. National and local leaders, as well as representatives from various faiths, met at the President Hotel in Moscow to celebrate the 140th anniversary of the Russian Synodal Bible. The translation was made after the establishment of the Russian Bible Society and is commonly used by the Russian Orthodox Church, Russian Baptist, and other Protestant denominations, as well as Roman Catholic congregations. During the meeting, several speakers also spoke about the need to safeguard biblical values and address the rising rate of divorce in the nation. Coming up, a Seventh-day Adventist program for the disabled receives a grant to conduct a paracycling event. But up next, Adventist members and students give clean water to residents in a city that's experiencing a water crisis. When my husband and I came to Christ together and were baptized, my family had a very difficult time with the transformation that God was making in our circumstances and in us personally. It was a, a painful time. And so I was convicted that I should just be still and that I should just pray and wait for God to resolve this situation. Welcome back, and now we have more news from our global church community. As a water crisis continues to affect a city in the U.S. state of Michigan, students from a Seventh-day Adventist University and an Adventist media center were recently able to give residents clean drinking water. Eleven students from Washington Adventist University decided to use their spring break to address the needs of residents in Flint who are affected by the water crisis. The water crisis began when government leaders of the city of Flint switched the city's water supply from Lake Huron to Flint River, which caused a disaster for local residents. The river's toxic water corroded the pipes and has caused lead to leak into the water supply for nearly 20 months. More than 100,000 residents haven't been able to use tap water for bathing, cooking, or drinking. The students from WAU raised funds to travel to Michigan to distribute more than 560 cases of water and assist a local warehouse in organizing the water that had been donated from all over the country. The students also prayed with residents of several neighborhoods in Flint and conducted a week of prayer for the children at the Fairhaven Seventh-day Adventist Elementary School. The Breath of Life television ministry, under the leadership of its speaker and director, Carlton Bird, also spearheaded a water distribution campaign in Flint. The ministry teamed up with local churches in the area and distributed more than 12,000 cases of water. Breath of Life ministry sent this report. The mission of Breath of Life is to present the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ to all people groups from a contemporary, urban perspective. We were privileged on Sunday, March the 20th, to take Breath of Life to an urban area, specifically Flint, Michigan. As you know, Flint has endured a major water contamination crisis. We believe that it is necessary to go beyond the four walls of the church and meet the people where they are and minister to them. I'm just saying that I was very grateful for everything that everybody's been doing for Flint and um, just seeing that people are concerned. You know, that's been really a blessing to know that people are very concerned about Flint and what's going on with the water situation and just how, you know, inconvenient it's been, you know, going through this ordeal. We're here because we want to minister to people. That was Jesus' method. Win people's confidence, then he bathed them. Follow me. So some people won't accept Jesus merely in a sermon or a song, but it's through service. And that's what we've come to do here in Flint. Serve the people. Service is the rent we pay for the space we occupy in the world. Breath of Life was able to provide 20,000 bottles of water to the residents of Flint. We praise God that we were able 
to give hope and help to those in the Flint area. We'd like to thank those ministries that partnered with us on this initiative. We'd like to thank the Fair Haven Seven Day Adventist Church, the Eternal Life Seven Day Adventist Church. We'd like to thank the Burns Seven Day Adventist Church in Detroit, Michigan, and also the Philadelphia Seven Day Adventist Church in Niles, Michigan. We'd also like to thank the Youth Department of the Lake Region Conference and all the way from Columbus, Ohio, the Central Seventh Day Adventist Church. A community outreach program by Loma Linda University Health that's geared toward creating a sense of community for people who are born with or sustained permanent physical injuries was awarded a grant to help support an upcoming cycling event. Possibilities was recently chosen to receive the grant by the United States Olympic Committee for clearly demonstrating the vision of the Craig H. Nielsen Foundation by providing opportunities and improving the lives of individuals with spinal cord injuries. The grant will help offset expenses for the Redlands Bicycle Classic Possibilities Paracycling Race Series as a designated host for the 2016 United States Paralympics Cycling Series event. Pedro Payne, Director of Possibilities, said, quote, we are very thankful to have been chosen for this grant. The additional funding will allow us to lend financial support to many challenged athletes that would otherwise not be able to participate in this event. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Southern Asia Pacific recently honored the legacies of two leaders who passed away within a year. The territory's previous president, Alberto Gulfan Jr., died in September 2015, while its most recent president, Leonardo Asoy, passed away on January 12th. Gulfan battled multiple myeloma and Asoy succumbed to the effects of a rare bone marrow disease called myodysplastic syndrome or MDS. The Southern Asia Pacific Division sent this report. It's been said that one drop of water can create ripples that eventually grow into an ocean's mighty waves touching far off shores. Such is the impact of a simple everyday decisions that triple outward to touch the lives of people we may never meet in ways we may never know. We can see this in the lives of our two former presidents, Pastor Alberto C. Gulfan Jr. and Pastor Leonardo R. Asoy. Rather than focusing on their number of years, meetings, or initiatives, what stands out most from both of their lives is their commitment to evangelism. Here in SSD, we honor this legacy of leadership, enthusiasm, and a desire to bring hope and healing to this region. Prayerfully, we are now allowing God to lead us in new directions this continuum, yet our focus remains on evangelism and how it is expanding in our 14 countries. We are seeking more and better ways to reach those who do not yet know Jesus. We're empowering our youth to reach not only their generation, but others as well, through leadership, mentoring, and community involvement. We're using technology to make new inroads in places and people groups we could not reach before. We're encouraging total member involvement through IEL and other SSD programs. Our united goal is that these initiatives will ripple out to its member and in turn, they will reach out to impact the people around them. To improve overall health, to mentor children and youth, to connect with others, to show Jesus in all these tangible ways. For SSD, 
is not made up of just one, but many whose lives interconnect, whose choices can impact others in far-reaching ways we cannot yet see, who collectively can become a mighty force for change. Coming up, Angela Taipei shares a social media report on Global Youth Day. But up next, find out how aerobic exercise can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. When I go to sleep, I pray for Jesus to help me not to have bad dreams. Pray for my grandpa because he is in cancer right now. Uh, I pray. I. I don't want to get sick anymore. I pray for my family. Please pray seven in the morning, seven in the evening, and seven days a week. And welcome back. Whether it's a Zumba class, kickboxing, or going outside for a quick jog, aerobic exercise has several health benefits, including reducing the risk of diabetes. Learn more in this week's episode of Live It! Whether it's a Zumba class, kickboxing, or going outside for a jog, aerobic exercise has several health benefits, including reducing the risk of diabetes. Obesity affects one-third of the adult population in the United States and can lead to a host of health problems, including diabetes type 2. Dr. David Hessinger and his colleagues studied a local running club during their six-month-long marathon training program. What they found is in the untrained group of both males and females, there was an increase in a protein called adepidectin. So, there's good news. If you're middle-aged and overweight, you can reduce your risk of diabetes by simply exercising. That pretty much agreed with what was already there in the literature. The difference for us was twofold. One, we use middle-aged subjects instead of college age. And two, most of the studies in the literature were done with athletes. What we found is over the course of that six months, there was this progressive increase. What are the tips for today? Incorporate aerobic exercise like running, walking, or biking at least five times a week for 30 minutes. What we eat is important as well. Make a conscious effort to limit rich desserts and fast foods, and go for a more balanced natural diet with fiber. Because fiber is one of those things that if it's plentiful in the diet, we don't absorb as many of the calories, and we certainly don't absorb them as quickly. So you don't get that insulin spike. There are also additional benefits to aerobic exercise. It makes you feel good when you're finished. It feels very good when you stop. It's related to the endorphins that are produced naturally in response to the continued challenge you put on the body. I think walking even is a good exercise. It's aerobic. Almost everybody can do that. There's your tip for the day. On how you can live healthier, longer. To learn more about Live It, Loma Linda University Health's new online health show, and to watch previous episode, visit liveitlomalinda.org. As we mentioned earlier in today's program, thousands of young people around the world participated in service projects in honor of Global Youth Day. But many more were able to keep track of the events online. Angela Taipei, our senior social media correspondent, has more of this week's social media report. This week in social media, the whole world watched as ominous young people took to the streets to serve those around them. You saw a brief report about this earlier in the episode, but it doesn't have to end there. The hashtags GYD16 and Global Youth Day helped chronicle thousands of experiences in a very special way. Check out the hashtag on Twitter or Instagram to scroll through the activities from around the world and hopefully seeing some of these creative projects can help inspire you as you look for ways to reach out to those in your community. For another source of inspiration from our Young People's Initiatives, check out the Global Youth Day website at globalyouthday.org 
where you'll see pictures and videos from around the world on a big map. If you were serving in a special way during Global Youth Day, we wanna hear about it. So make sure and download the app and upload your pictures to help inspire others. There's also a YouTube playlist being built of videos from around the world. You'll find it by searching on YouTube for GC Youth Ministries. If one of these creative ideas encourages you, your group, or your church to do something in your community, let us know. We're always excited to hear your stories of service. You can tweet us at our handle, Adventist Church, or even submit your story on the web through news.adventist.org. Just click Submit a News Story in the right-hand column. We can't wait to hear how you've been inspired to serve others. And finally, for today's program, let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, learn when the first issue of the Signs of the Time magazine was published. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On March 19, in 1872, Joseph Bates died at the Western Health Reform Institute in Battle Creek, Michigan. His theological understanding of the Sabbath and the sanctuary and his zeal for health reform were exceptionally influential. With James and Ellen White, Bates was one of the three chief founders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which probably would not have come into existence without him. On March 20 in 1840, the first issue of the Millerite journal, Signs of the Times, was published under the editorship of Joshua V. Himes. On March 22 in 1949, the first Seventh-day Adventist baptism in Tuvalu in the South Pacific took place when seven candidates prepared by Tevita Niu were baptized. Niu was the first Seventh-day Adventist missionary to the small island country of Tuvalu, and he had begun work there two and a half years earlier, in October 1946. On March 23 in 1907, in the city of Rangoon, the first Adventist church in Myanmar was organized by missionary G.B. Thompson with 23 members. And also on March 23, but 22 years later, in 1929, the legendary missionary Gus Youngberg baptized eight people in the first public Seventh-day Adventist baptism to take place in Batakland, Indonesia. That was This Week in Adventist History. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In the meantime, join our global conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can connect with the Adventists worldwide through more stories, photos, and videos. Visit Facebook slash Adventist News, Twitter at Adventist Church, and Instagram at Adventist Church. And our good news for this week comes from the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. The passage says, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. Amen. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. And you take care.